Hello everyone, this is Mirzai from Cal Poly Pomona and in this lesson we're going to talk about confidence interval and hypothesis testing for two population. In the previous lesson we said depending on whether the population variances are known or not known, we're going to have different method. We started with when the sigma 1 and sigma 2 are uh, given. Then we develop a two-sided confidence interval and hypothesis testing method for the difference between two population averages when the variances are known. So in this lesson, we're going to look into how one-sided equation has been uh, calculated. So remember that x bar 1 minus x bar 2 was normally distributed with the average and standard deviation shown on the screen. Now in this uh, case, we want to create an upper bound for the difference between the mu 1 and mu2. So if I write mu1 minus mu2 less than or equal to u, which is an upper bound, is equal to 1 minus alpha. We want to find what is that upper bound that the difference between the average of two population falls less than that with some level of confidence or with some probability. Again, I'm going to use the standard normal uh, probability distribution. We know that the probability that z is greater than negative z of alpha is 1 minus alpha. Why? Because if this is the normal distribution, if this is negative z of alpha, we know that the area after negative z of alpha is going to be 1 minus alpha because the area before that is alpha. So now, using this uh, property, I'm going to develop my uh, confidence interval. I'm just going to need to replace the value of z that on the top with the z in the probability term. So if I do that and multiply both sides with uh, the standard deviation term that is given in the denominator and and also um, isolate mu1 and mu2 in one side of this equation, then uh, you're going to have this term, which is the upper bound that we were looking for. So probability that dif the difference between the average of the two population becomes less than this term is going to be equal to 1 minus alpha. Now I can set up hypothesis testing the three step as well. So first I have to set up a hypothesis mu1 uh, minus mu2 greater than or equal to some difference. Remember, when you set up your hypothesis, the sign of your confidence interval it should be consistent with the sign of your alternative test. So for example, if the mu1 minus mu2 is less than or equal to d null, then you have to set up a confidence interval that is a mu1 minus mu2 is less than or equal to something. Basically, you're looking for an upper bound similar to this case. Again, if you want to find an equivalent confidence interval for a test of hypothesis, the sign of the confidence interval should be matching with your alternative test. So, because there are questions that might ask you to test a hypothesis using test of hypothesis formal method, which is on the right-hand side, or using a confidence interval, which is on the left-hand side. So, if you want to test this hypothesis using confidence interval, you have to find an upper bound for mu1 minus mu2 because the alternative test is mu1 minus mu2 is less than something. Basically, you want to find the confidence interval according to mu1 minus mu2 less than some amount, or you want to find the upper bound. So if I calculate the statistic z, and this d0 is basically the hypothesized value that you have from the test of hypothesis. You want that z falls greater than negative z of alpha according to this term here, right? So, so your acceptance region is going to be from negative z of alpha to infinity. So when you do the test of hypothesis, basically you place in a specific hypothesized value in this term and you test whether that becomes greater than negative z of alpha or not. If it does, you fail to reject the null, otherwise you reject the null hypothesis. However, if you don't do the test of hypothesis and just go based on your uh, confidence interval here, you calculate the confidence interval and you see whether you hypothesize mu1 minus mu2, which is your d0, falls into this region or not. If it does, you fail to reject the null hypothesis, otherwise you reject the null. So these are two alternative ways of testing the hypothesis, either confidence interval or test of hypothesis. But if I ask you to run a test of hypothesis, what you need to do is to uh, implement these three steps. If I ask you to test a hypothesis using confidence interval, then you calculate this interval. Now the difference is here, when you calculate z, you have to see if z falls into this region. However, if I have to ask you to test a hypothesis, using confidence interval, you have to see whether the hypothesized mu 
falls into this interval or not. If it does, you fail to reject the null, otherwise you reject the null hypothesis. Now, now that we talked about the upper bound, you, in the next slide, I'm going to show you how the lower bound is going to be exactly the same as calculating the upper bound with, with a slight differences. So we want to find what is that lower bound, or L, that the probability that mu1 minus mu2 becomes greater than that L is equal to uh, 1 minus alpha. So again, I use the property of Z of alpha. I know that at point Z of alpha, the area under the normal standard normal curve is alpha, so the area prior to that is 1 minus alpha. Therefore, probability that Z is less than Z of alpha is going to be 1 minus alpha. Now, I replace the Z, because these two Z are the same, the one that are shown with red, so I replace that Z in here and develop my confidence interval. So that becomes your confidence interval for the lower bound of the mu1 minus mu2. So if I want to set up the hypothesis testing, similarly, the, the sign of the hypothesis testing and confidence interval should be matching up. Both of them are mu1 minus mu2 greater than some amount. They calculate my Z statistic and see if the Z falls into this acceptance region or not. Why my acceptance region is for a negative infinity to Z of alpha? Look at this term. So if I calculate Z and put my hypothesis value D null into this region, I want it to fall less than Z of alpha. So it's going to give me the negative infinity to Z of alpha. Again, if I ask you to test a hypothesis uh, that is one-sided, if you want to test it using the confidence interval, you have to find a confidence interval that is matching with your alternative test sign. If mu1 minus mu2 is greater than something, so you find you need to find an in interval that is greater than some amount or it's greater than the lower bound. You have to find the lower bound for your confidence interval. So now let's take a look at with this, our lesson has concluded. Please refer to the next lesson to see a few examples and following the examples, then you can refer to your Blackboard for your assignments. Thank you.